All right, man, peace. So in the aftermath of the Kawhi Leonard trade to the Toronto Raptors, there are many NBA media pundits that are giving their take as to why it was extremely imperative that the San Antonio Spurs made this trade. I've stated in previous videos covering this topic that eventually Kawhi Leonard would demand a trade. I actually thought that he would come back last season to show that teams should want him and that he could participate and still maintain that same level of excellence that he's shown throughout the last three or four years of his NBA career. But he and his team decided otherwise, I think because they had so much distaste for Greg Popovich and his attempts to mentally manipulate not only Kawhi, but the entire situation. So, of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. Um, the Spurs <laughs> traded Kawhi Leonard, which is a weird sentence to say. And I don't think that there's anything weird about that sentence. As a matter of fact, I think that many of the followers, the viewers of the NBA, should become far more accustomed to the top-level stars in the league switching teams every three to four years. Gone are the days where players stayed with the same franchise for 12, 15 years, 17 years. And for the most part, the main reason why most of those players did that is because of the immobilarity in the NBA back in the 80s and even throughout the early 90s. People say, well, Kobe and Tim Duncan stayed with the same team. Both of those players seriously contemplated and at certain points preferred playing for other teams. One of the most underreported aspects of Tim Duncan's career is that not only was he ready to sign with the Orlando Magic, he was on his way to signing with the Orlando Magic to team up with Tracy McGrady and Grant Hill. But that idiot Doc Rivers told Tim Duncan that he would not be allowed to fly with his family on a team plane. And as we've already known and already covered, Kobe Bryant demanded a trade numerous times throughout his career and oftentimes would threaten to go to the Chicago Bulls because he wanted out and he wanted to build on Michael Jordan's legacy in Chicago. So, once again, become accustomed to top-level players in the NBA going from team to team. And Pop explains sort of the reasoning for making the deal. Take a listen to this. Attempts were made, you know, to see what would be best. And No, attempts were made to see if you could get back in Kawhi Leonard's good graces, and you failed. He was done with you. Once again, you have to understand personality types. And for a person like Popovich, who has a background in CIA psychological training, for him to get this one that wrong is surprising to me. As Shannon Sharp stated so well on Undisputed, Kawhi Leonard is what you call an implosive personality. There are certain people that you can fall out with and then fall back in with and then fall out with. You know, people like that, you see them all the time. They argue, they break up, they make up. And I'm not, I'm not even just talking about male and female. You have dudes like that. Look at 50 Cent and Floyd Mayweather. Look at Adrian Broner and Javante Tank Davis or Adrian Broner and Floyd Mayweather. You have people like that who they like to go through those ups and downs in life. They're very mercurial. Kawhi Leonard is not like that at all. He's one of those people that when he tells you something, that's what he means and he's not playing around. He demands loyalty, most likely because he's an extremely loyal person. And when he sees that there's been a breach in the loyalty that he demands from you, you're dead to him. It's a wrap. And in the end, uh, this trade uh, appeared and uh, we felt that this, this was the way to go. You felt that was the way to go. At the end of the day, Greg Popovich, that was the best Eastern Conference team that was willing to give you the most. Boston was unwilling to part with Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum. You could not get the LA Lakers to give up Brandon Ingram. The only team that really was left that you can get something back for that was even moderately commensurate for Kawhi Leonard were the Toronto Raptors. You saw a player like DeMar DeRozan who's broken mentally. You said to yourself, he'll be like Plato in my hands. He's talented. I can manipulate him and I can build him up into being commensurate with a Kawhi Leonard. So this is sort of kind of the day after, after we kind of get through the shock of, of the actual trade. We still really don't know what happened, right? There's a million... No, you really don't trust what happened. I already told you what happened, Rachel Nichols. Kawhi Leonard got hurt. He came back. He still felt pain in his leg. He got his leg looked at by other doctors, other physicians. They told him something different from what the San Antonio Spurs staff was telling him. The Spurs staff and Greg Popovich were trying to put an extreme amount of pressure on him to return back to the lineup. He did not feel comfortable with that pressure. Greg Popovich tried to ratchet it up by engaging in slander 
in the media subconscious slander by claiming that the Spurs medical staff had given Kawhi the green light and he had no idea what was going on. You have to go ask Kawhi Leonard's team. Greg Popovich felt like if he put Kawhi Leonard in an uncomfortable situation, Kawhi would be forced to crack. He would be forced to do something that Greg had never seen Kawhi do, which is open up and become transparent. He thought to himself that if he could make Kawhi that uncomfortable, that Kawhi eventually would conform. And I think that he underestimated Kawhi Leonard's resolve. That's all that happened. And Kawhi felt disrespected both by Popovich and by the Spurs organization and eventually by many of his teammates. And he said, I want to get the hell up out of here. Sort of versions of something out there in a nice way, graciously. It doesn't seem like either side is going to do a tell-all and trash the other one on the way out the door, which is good. But it means that we don't really know. And this is a different situation where Kyrie, poor Dave, has had to hear me say 2,000 times the Cavs didn't have to trade Kyrie. He was under contract for two more years. Kawhi... Kyrie Irving is another person. I would not call him implosive like a Kawhi Leonard, but he's another person who's not going to allow you to box him in. Rachel Nichols seems to believe that they would have been able to play hardball with Kyrie Irving. I guarantee you that Kyrie Irving would have gotten that knee surgery, that procedure done on his leg, and he would have sat out the whole season. Why had the opt out for next summer? Mm -hmm. It's a little different, right? The clock got ticking on his value in a different way. Do you feel like Okay, they had to deal him now, and this was the best deal available, that his trade value was dwindling with every day? I don't think that Kawhi Leonard's trade value was dwindling, but they did have to trade him right now because the San Antonio Spurs have created and helped foster this narrative around their organization that they're drama-free. So if they were to have an issue like this carry over from last season into next season, this Kawhi Leonard situation hanging over their heads, it would have done a lot to detract from that narrative that they've worked so hard to create and foster. Or do you yeah. feel like uh, well, uh, it, it, they it, could have held them till the beginning of the season or the trade deadline? There's, there's, there's two parts of the decision tree. Part, one side is, can we keep them, right? And if you feel like the answer to that is no, then it flows into the other one. Once you know you can't keep them, then you, you have to deal with them. Right. You have to deal them sooner rather than later because... Absolutely. It's like any other relationship in life. Once you know that the person that you're associating with, whether it be a friend, a co-worker, a colleague, a significant other, is not beneficial in your life, you have to find a way to eradicate that energy from your life. And that's the bottom line of it. Also, please keep in mind that Greg Popovich has created this energy around himself as the super liberal, woke, Caucasian coach. For him to appear to be someone who was holding Kawhi Leonard hostage, that is not good for his image. Because, because of the impending free agency, because every day that he is not available for the team that wants to quote unquote rent him, that's a day less than they have to prove to him our culture is amazing, our city is amazing, our, or your teammates are amazing, right? So the question is, did they absolutely have to trade, trade him, right? Not did they trade, have to trade him now, did they have to trade him? If the answer to that is yes, then you trade him now. The I agree, sir. The answer is no. Could they have mended it? Maybe not, but then again, we don't... No, I mean, there is no maybe involved. They knew that this situation was not something that they would be able to repair when Popovich attempted over and over to reach out to Kawhi, eventually was able to get the meeting with him, and the meeting only lasted 10 minutes, and Kawhi Leonard was clearly unreceptive to what Popovich was trying to put forth. We don't really know, as you said, that's between Kawhi and, and Pop. Yeah, the offers aren't going to get better the longer you wait. I and mean, Zach Lowe reported this week that Boston was trying to trade for him back in February. Right. So really, we look at maybe that this timeline, they they could have waited longer, but they've been waiting for five months, really, right. to find this deal. And that's why I feel like they, you've got to move on. Like, I mean, as he said, they didn't think that, okay, if he goes to USA camp with Pop, it's going right. to be enough to mend the fences. They made a calculated decision that it's over. Right. And what what's on the table right they didn't make a decision that it was over Kawhi Leonard made that decision these guys keep trying to make it a Spurs thing the Spurs never had the power over Kawhi Popovich finally understood it's like the Emperor told Luke Skywalker near the end of Return of the Jedi he said only now at the end do you understand <laughs> that's how Kawhi was with Popovich Popovich didn't get it like he really thought that he could play games with Kawhi and that's what the situation came down to. Popovich and Kawhi both had to face facts that this situation is just far too untenable for either one. I think that Popovich said to himself, you know what, I need to move this guy right now.
because if I don't move him right now and this carries over into next season, now I have to start answering more questions and I'm wasting time. I'm getting older. I'm not going to be doing my due diligence to try to hold on to something that this other person no longer wants to maintain. It's best in life to move forward when both parties involved in the dynamic are not 100% invested. Right now. And they achieve their goal of not trading into the Western Conference. Right. I mean, I guess part of it depends on do you have any faith that other teams who are in the race for him circumstances will change? Mm, right? Right. Like, will somebody who's a contender have a serious injury that they feel like, okay, we got to go for it now? Maybe in a Warriors okay. dominating world, that's just not a factor. And that's, but also, that's a gamble, right? Right. You're hoping some, the right team, something goes wrong and for them. Needs... And they're willing to give up enough right. to make the deal. Or work. pressure changes. Look, again, you know, here in LA. If... None of that has anything to do with what's going on right now, Amin Al Hassan. You know that, and I know that. There's no way in the world that San Antonio could wait all next season for a contending team to have a serious injury and be willing to give up enough prospects, draft picks, and good players for a Kawhi Leonard. That makes no sense. Because the only team that they could possibly have been looking at is a Boston. And if one of their top young players goes down, why would you trade for them? That makes no sense for anyone. They had to make the move right now. If, if pressure builds because they're not winning the way right. they expected, and it, you know, I, it's funny. I, we keep talking, we're going to have this discussion all summer about where the Lakers rank in the Western Conference. I was driving in today, and on some of one of our ESPN family of podcasts, they're talking about the Lakers not making the playoffs. So we'll see. The Lakers will make the playoffs. They'll be somewhere in between a three and a six seed. See, um, maybe that pressure would have built for the Lakers, but, but you know, there's something to be said. I'm not ratting anyone out. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's something to be said for, you know, when you, once you know you have to do it. Yeah. Just get it done. All right, let's talk, though, about the Raptors side of things. According to the Toronto Sun, Kawhi's camp had some positive talks with the Raptors after the trade was finalized. Woj has reported he's warming to the deal. Dave, where do you feel Kawhi's embrace of the city of Toronto should be? I love I think that Kawhi Leonard is going to make the best of this situation at the end of the day. Toronto is viewed as a city that is extremely cosmopolitan, a city with good ambiance, good atmosphere. He can look at it as a one season vacation. Do I believe that he's going to stay there? Not unless they win a championship or maybe get to the finals. If Kawhi Leonard can lead that team to the finals, I think that he will seriously consider staying. But if they were to go out in the second round to Philadelphia or in the third round to Boston, he's out of there. I think that he wants to be in L.A., and the only thing that can stop that from happening is a seriously long playoff run with the Toronto Raptors. But I don't think that it's entirely outside of the realm of possibility that he signs a long-term extension with that team, especially if, once again, he's able to ingratiate himself with his teammates and he's able to lead them in ways that DeMar DeRozan was unable to. And quite frankly, with LeBron James no longer in the Eastern Conference, that conference is wide open. Of course, my favorite is the Boston Celtics, as long as they stay healthy. But with Kawhi Leonard in Toronto, who knows what can happen? I love to see Toronto, and I, I like some of the players I have there, too. But you can't really like it or know if you like it until you're in it. Right. So I think it's kind of silly. It's like, okay, he's coming off his soapbox where he needs to be in L.A. Well, because he can't be in L.A. Um, I guess it means that he's not going to hold out. He's going to report. But beyond that, until he actually learns what his relationship's like with Masai day-to-day and Nick Nurse day-to-day and Kyle Lowry day-to-day, he can't really know whether he likes it or not. I mean, you gotta go, you gotta play basketball, yeah. right? This year has to be played. Regardless of whether you want to leave at the end of it or not, you might as well go and make the best of it rather than further, you know, ruining your reputation more than it already has. So. Well, and, and also, look, the other threat is, oh, he wouldn't report. That is oh. so dramatic. Mm. It was... Oh- There's no way that Kawhi Leonard was not going to report. I think that Popovich understood that even if he had kept Kawhi, that Kawhi would eventually have had to report because it would have looked so poorly on him as a player if he were to not report back to the San Antonio Spurs. But I think that Popovich feared that Kawhi Leonard would not be mentally and spiritually invested in his team. And that's very important for a team in a franchise that has championship experience and championship aspirations to make sure that everyone involved is fully invested. And if Kawhi were to have been brought back to San Antonio, he would have been expected to be the leader. And we can't have our leader be someone that's not all in. So all those factors play an extremely important part in why Greg Popovich and everyone else involved knew that Kawhi had to be moved. Always, yes, 
yes, it was a possibility, but always like super unlikely it was going to happen. So if he reports, as we expect him to, because yes, he would like to get paid. And by the way, if he just didn't report all year, his free agency would kick to another yeah. year. So there's no point. There, there there's would be no, no point. There's in no not absol absolutely. Absolutely no. Um, once he sort of come to terms with the fact that this is where I am and I have to report, I mean, there's no point in making it terrible for a year. And by the way, I've also seen other side people say, oh, see, this is what happened. They, they exiled him there. Well, they exiled they him. They sent him to one of the best one teams the in the league. Right. One of the best teams in the league. One of the best cities in the league. He's a married man, so he won't fully be able to take advantage of that. But he is in what is considered one of the better cities in the league, and he could view it once again as a one-year vacation, as a one-season exploratory adventure to see what it's like in Toronto. It's not a big deal. He'll get used to it. At best, he'll resign. At worst, if Masai Ujiri believes that there's no chance of being able to bring back Kawhi, they may move him at the trading deadline for some younger assets and prospects. Who knows? Right. And, one of, and one of the and best the cities in the league. cosmopolitan, awesome cities in the league. And by so. the way, if he's not warm of being in Toronto, just wait till he hangs out with Drake just one time. He'll <laughs> warm up real quick. It'll be just fine. We'll see. I, I'm, you know, I think Messiah Jury is certainly compelling, and I think there's lots to be said there. I also think it's a great point that you don't know what's going to happen in a given season in the NBA ever and if you disagree with me i have the words secret tunnel and no. sixers gm burner twitter account oh boy. to share with what you. a year uh, yeah the nba definitely has started to take on a soap opera slash reality tv show aspect to it and i think that is great for the league because the players are so individual one of the most important aspects of marketing in the nba is marketing the individual marketing each and every player not only for their talents but for the aura that they emit. It's very difficult to do that in other sports. The NBA is the only major sport where the players never at any time wear any head covering, and they only wear face covering when they're injured. So it allows the fan base and the viewers to connect with them on a more intimate level. But that's pretty much it on that in regards to Kawhi Leonard. We'll see what happens with him in Toronto. So peace.